I'm Azalea, welcome to Azalea's Kitchen. Today I'd like to show you how to make light scones. Incredibly light and easy to make. It can be made ahead, put in the fridge and then ready for baking when you are. The ingredients for this are plain flour, all-purpose flour, butter, preferably at room temperature but it doesn't matter if it's cold from the fridge, baking powder, a little bit of sugar, milk and some eggs and the eggs will provide moisture as well as um, help the dough to be a bit tender with the fat from the yolks. This recipe was given to me by a great pastry chef and a fantastic baker, a friend called Gregoire Michaud and he showed me a way of making scones which I hadn't up until that point ever seen and that is make the dough, leave it to rest in the fridge for hours if you want to before baking. Normally all recipes say make the dough and quickly bake it. So this is a great one to have to hand. So I'm going to start with sieving the flour into the bowl. It doesn't seem as if you're doing very much when you're sieving the flour, but you are you're adding little air pockets as the flour is um, hitting, going down to hit the bowl. So it does help a little bit. Now add the baking powder and sieve that because often the baking powder is clumped up like that. So you need to sieve that through. And now we're adding the um, fat, the butter. And if it's cold from the fridge, just slice it really thinly into little cubes, but thin cubes, and it will also, with the pressure of your, um, of your fingertips, will actually start to rub into the flour and melt away. So don't worry if you've forgotten to take the butter out of the fridge, it will still be absolutely fine. Now I'm going to use my fingertips to rub this fat into the flour. This is the most important part of the, um, the scondo, and that is to cover as much of the flour particles as you can with the fat. And what you're doing then is you're stopping the flour particles that are covered in the fat from being hydrated from the milk and the eggs. And what it means is, is that part of the flour doesn't get hydrated, it doesn't develop gluten, and so you get a much tender scone. So rub really well the um, fat into the flour. And if you um, find this hard to do, this can be done in the food processor, as if you were making pastry. So now I'm just gonna carry on doing this and I'll show you at the end how the flour should look. It should look like very fine breadcrumbs Now I've been rubbing the fat with the flour for about a minute, a minute and a half now and I can feel it's about ready and you'll feel it that uh, it's ready because A it's more crumb like and also it starts to clump up and then you're thinking okay this is now ready to be adding the next ingredients. This is a, a time for me also to tell you that you should use plain flour, don't use bread flour. I've seen recipes for scones with bread flour and all you're doing apart from paying more money for flour bread flour tends to be more expensive than ordinary plain flour is that you're adding flour which has a high a gluten content so you're in effect adding the glutinous that you really don't want in the scone you want the scone to break apart um, cake like not bread like so ignore the bread uh, flour recommendations and go for plain flour now have a look at this crumb texture and see how fine it is you can see how it's bread, fine bread crumb like in texture and if you press it with your thumbs it clumps up together like that and that means that the butter has been distributed throughout the flour particles nicely. I'm going to add the sugar now and it just needs pouring in and with your fingertips is fine to stir it in. It's not a lot of sugar so it's not sort of sweet as such but it's a little bit sweetened. I haven't added any salt to this because the butter is already salted. 
um, if you use unsalted butter, and unsalted butter tends to have a, far, um, a higher fat content, then add a pinch of salt, um, about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, so the sugar's gone in. Now I'm going to add the eggs and the milk. So I've got the eggs whole here, and I'm just going to break them up a little bit first with a fork. Now for me, I've always done this whenever ever I've made cakes, is how I was taught to make cakes, um, to break up the eggs if you're not whisking the eggs. And they're ready by when you pull up, they don't clump, a great big clump of egg comes up. Okay, so when they're like this, it means that they've broken up enough in order to be distributed in the recipe nicely. So that's the egg. And the milk goes in. And using one hand, you just bring everything together, bring the flour into the middle with the egg and the milk. And as you can see, I'm really squashing the flour and the milk and the egg together. And you can see I'm collecting all the dry bits of flour from the bottom, making sure they're covered in the moisture. And as I do that, it's forming a dough really easily, clumping together nicely. And I have the dough ready. It will need to rest a little while in the fridge before you cut it up because it's very tender. So now I'm just going to scrape the bits off my hand onto the dough, like so. I have dough that I'm going to wrap up and put it in the fridge to rest. Now the reason that you have to rest the dough is because it's so tender that if you try to cut it out now it wouldn't hold the shape very well so it needs 30 minutes at least in the fridge to um, harden a little bit for the butter to harden a little bit and enabling you to cut it out nicely. And I'm just going to mention the baking powder. The reason that you can make this dough hours ahead, for example, the night before for the morning's bake or the morning, or make it in the morning for the afternoon bake, is because it uses baking powder, which is called double acting baking powder. In this um, country, in the UK, we buy baking powder and pretty much all the time that I've ever bought baking powder, it will be double acting baking powder. This means that it has cream of tartar, and bicarbonate of soda in the baking powder and those two ingredients they balance each other out and they really activated with heat although there'll be some activation with a little bit of moisture and you'll see the dough after resting will puff up a little bit but most of the activation from these two ingredients will be done in the oven when it heats up now I posted this recipe in my website a while back and I have people from around the world um, occasionally complaining that it didn't, the dough didn't work out very well and when I asked questions about their baking powder it turns out that they were using single acting baking powder. So they didn't have both ingredients, they only had the um, bicarbonate of soda which means that the uh, reaction was immediate and by the time the dough went into the oven it didn't really rise very much. So if you can't get double acting baking powder, and it should tell you on the actual ingredients, then use a mixture of, um, like this one, use a mixture of cream of tartar and bicarbonate of soda together. The dough has been resting for 40 minutes, so it's a little bit cool and easier to handle. I am going to flour the surface, put it on, and now with this dough, um, because it's um, so easy to stretch out, you don't even have to roll it out. You can just use your fingers to stretch it out to the right height. And the most important thing, apart from rubbing fat into the flour at the beginning um, for making uh, scones, is measuring tape, because you don't roll it out very thinly. You have to have 
a certain thickness for a scone. Now, um, I, an inch is about right for me, which is roughly two and a half centimetres. So um, do measure it out because I have had the occasion of um, not measuring it out, forgetting that you're supposed to leave a thickness when rolling out the, um, the dough. And one time I rolled them out so thinly, they were like thick pastry. They were really, really shallow. Uh, I had people coming over for afternoon tea, so I decided to um, go ahead, pretend I was meant to make these that shallow, cut them in half, put the cream and the jam on them, and call them scone biscuits, and everybody loved them. So sometimes you can just get away with it. But if you're making nice deep scones, don't um, roll them out too thin. So here we are, and it's pretty much, I think, the uh, thickness I want. I'm going to cut them out, and when you cut them, go straight down, like that. And now you can remove them. They should be that thick. How many you have will obviously depend on the size of the cutter. But using this cutter, I normally guess about between 12 and 15 scones. When you reshape the dough to cut out the second and third batch, they, the scones don't come up as nice and straight as the first batch. But it doesn't matter for me, you know, it's the taste really. I'm going to rejoin the dough, form into a ball. Now they're ready for baking almost. I have here egg yolk and a tablespoon of milk, which is the egg wash, so you mix it up together and brush the tops with it. And that gives a nice golden colour. Now they're ready for baking in a hot oven and it'll take between 12-15 minutes. They're just out of the oven so they're still very hot but I wanted to show you how much they've risen and what colour they have. A beautiful golden colour. I'm going to open one up and you'll see how lovely the crumb is. The perfect time to have the scone is when it's like this warm out of the oven. That's when the crumb is the lightest because the fat in it is still in a um, liquidy form. And when the scone cools down, the fat solidifies again and the scone, I think, loses its specialness for me. So have it now when it's warm and obviously the English way is to have clotted cream and jam. I don't think most people do have clotted cream and jam if they have a scone on a regular basis. So butter and good jam I think are essential. Now I have been waiting for these to be baked for me to scoff them. All the details for the recipe are on my website including if you don't have double acting baking powder how much bicarbonate of soda and cream of tartar you need to use. So go there at azaleaskitchen.net. I'll see you next time.